Okay, we've got our adrenal drugs, which are made in the adrenal cortex, which sits like a top hat on top of the kidneys. This includes the medulla and the cortex. The medulla is inside the cortex, kind of like a nice little bite of sushi. Now you're going to remember what makes what was happening inside the medulla by thinking of epinephrine and norepinephrine as fight or flight drugs. Now we are dueling, fighting over the last piece of sushi here in the medulla. And our catecholamines are epinephrine and norepinephrine, but also dopamine. But we're just going to think about epi and norepi right now. So Ned the cat eats what cannot flight or fight away. So Ned the cat's going to help you remember your catecholamines, which are made in the medulla. Let's switch over to the adrenal cortex. We have hardcore Texas cowgirl Ms. G over here, reminding us that glucocorticoids, sex hormones, and mineral corticoids are made in the adrenal cortex. Now, mineral corticoids include aldosterone, which is all about blood pressure control, and cortisol, that's the one that's gonna manage stress, inflammation response, glucose balance, direct carbohydrate metabolism, as well as lipid and fat metabolism. And these are going to be drugs that have topical or systemic effects. So cortisol is a super big deal, um, topical or systemic, remember that. Now aldosterone, which is a blood pressure control kind of thing happening with sodium and water retention, that is systemic and uh, worth remembering. Both of these, the mineral corticoids and glucocorticoids, are corticosteroids. So both of them are that. Let's chat. Uh, a little bit here about the importance of knowing that each has different functions um, for these different hormones. Now with cortisol, you can remember what it does by looking at the letters in the word cortisol. <laughs> so C stands for carb, think glycogenesis, so it might even be making sugar if your body needs it. Um, switching over to that R, we're going to do a stretch here, but protein breakdown is what that's going to make you think of. Now. T, think stress, like stress, like, yeah, that S is missing, maybe that's got you stressed out, but that's stress. Now, I for immune response and inflammation response, that's super big deal, I is very important. S is our sugar balance, and L is for lipid redistribution. Now, we've got these two O's left, that's going to remind you of fluid and salt retention. So, yeah, H2O, fluid, and salt retention, cortisol. Uh, but... We are going to remember that fludrocortisone is the only mineral-specific drug, our mineral corticosteroid here, um, kind of like aldosterone, that's actually mostly about blood pressure control, whereas cortisol, cortisol just does it a little bit. Our synthetic versions of cortisol are the hydrocorticoids and cortisone, which are mostly anti-inflammatory, so that's the big deal. There's only a little bit of mineral corticoid property there. Now, adrenal steroid inhibitors work against the actions of what we just discussed. So if you've got uh, too much or too little of these drugs is going to depend what's going on with your body. So let's talk about Addison versus Cushion. So adrenocortical hormones from the cortex here, if you have too little, you're hypo, and if you have too much, you're hyper. So. We're mostly talking about cortisol and aldosterone um, from the cortex here. Uh, so here's just a quick cortex reminder of what we're talking about. Now, hypoadrenocortical hormones would give you Addison's disease. <laughs> so think about Addison's by remembering my son's unusual dancing behavior doesn't add up. So here we've got a picture of uh, potassium on his head, bananas on his head, a little fruit basket. Um, dehydration, he's skinny, he's got some weight loss, he's just sweating it out as he's dancing here. And uh, he likes dancing on top of uh, salt and candy. So that'll remind you that low glucose and low sodium, as well as high potassium, are signs that go along with Addison's disease. There you go. Hopefully that will uh, be burned in your brain. Now talking about cushions, think extra cushion for the cushion. We've got these monkeys in a pillow fight. But they're not just any monkeys, they are moon-faced, humpback, hairy monkeys in a weak pillow fight because they have muscle atrophy. Now, what you need to know about these pillow fighting monkeys is that they love salted peanuts and they love candy, but they hate bananas. I don't know, it's just what they're into. So, think high sodium, low potassium, and high glucose tolerance. That's going to help you remember what's up with cushions. And, of course, we've got our extra 
how blood pressure sales increase and hypertension effects that you need to know about. So there you go. That's how to recognize Cushing's disease. Let's chat a little bit about glucocorticoids and what to know about them. Now you can give these in IV or IM injections uh, for systemic needs, but don't ever give this subcutaneously. Nope, don't do it. I know you want to. Don't think about it. Don't ever do it. Nope, not subcut. Moving on for the replacement or therapeutic needs. So replacing would be if they have adrenocortical deficiencies like Addison's disease or adrenogenital syndrome. So that's uh, what the S stands for, for Mrs. G. So Mrs. G over here, sex hormones, those are androgens, and that's what we're talking about. If you're deficient, you've got adrenogenital syndrome. Now therapeutic, if you're not missing anything, you use these to treat all kinds of stuff in the body. Bacterial meningitis, cerebral edema, collagen diseases like lupus, skin diseases, endocrine diseases, GI diseases, asthma and COPD, respiratory diseases, bleeding disorders, eye inflammation, organ transplantation, leukemia and lymphoma, kidney nephrotic syndrome or spinal cord injury. Whew, that's a whole lot of stuff happening all over the body. So keep that in mind because it's going to make some sense when uh, we're talking about some adverse reactions and stuff like that. So contraindications, Allergies, always. Serious infections like sepsis, systemic fungal infections, or chicken pox, but you're gonna keep taking these drugs if somebody has tubercular meningitis because it's worth taking to prevent CNS damage. That's bad, you wanna keep your brain. Glaucoma and cataracts are a contraindication uh, because they are. Peptic ulcers and mental health problems are also kind of an issue, so contraindicated for those. Use with caution in gastritis, GERD, ulcers, and diabetes as well as if somebody's having organ dysfunction with their heart, their kidneys, or their liver. Um, caution, caution, caution. So keep this stuff in mind. It's going to um, fold back here as we talk about some adverse effects that you can see with these glucocorticoids. Cardiac effects include some potential for creating heart failure and edema and hypertension and electrolyte imbalances, especially your potassium and sodium. So remember our little cartoon up here about Addison's being high potassium and uh, Cushing's being low potassium um, and uh, respective sodium. Uh, CNS can be conversions, convulsions, vertigo, mood swings, anxiety, and insomnia. So anything that you know messes with your brain is good to know about. Endocrine, we've got growth suppression, Cushing syndromes, mental irregularities, carbohydrate intolerance, hypoglycemia, HPA axis suppression, GI includes peptic ulcers, integus, fragile skin, bruising, blood freckles, redness in the face, hair growth, poor wound healing, and itching. And uh, of course, there could be some weight gain. So we've got our little penguin here to remind us that glucocorticoids can cause some weight gain. Uh, increase ocular pressure, so it might cause glaucoma and cataracts, and this is why it's not recommended for people who have that, or osteoporosis or muscle atrophy. Our weak pillow fighting um, monkeys up there, uh, yeah, it can cause some of that. And here's our drug interactions and what you probably don't want to mix it with. So potassium wasting diuretics, like our loop diuretics and thiazide diuretics, are going to make even less potassium and less calcium remain in the body so it can become even more severe if it's mixed with these glucocorticoid drugs. NSAIDs, not super recommended because of the additive GI bleeding effect and anticholinesterase drugs for myasthenia gravis patients can feel even more weakness than they already have. Diabetes patients, you're going to see their insulin work less and that's going to cause higher blood glucose, which is not ideal. And the immune biologic drugs are going to have the, their effects blocked um, if they combo those drugs with our uh, hormone drugs here, so not recommended to um, mix with those. Now let's talk about our three drugs that were mentioned as star drugs for uh, this chapter, first one being prednisone. It's our number one oral glucocorticoid. That's, you put it in your mouth, think prednisone. It's for anti-inflammation and anti-immune response and it has an intermediate acting length of time. It's great for asthma and COPD exacerbation, so if they're having bronchospasms, they're gonna love that prednisone. Now, it has minimal mineral corticoid properties, so that means it's not awesome for Addison's. There's gonna be other drugs that treat that better because they need that 
blood pressure effect and mineral corticoid with salt. Now the liquid form is prednisolone, which is nice to know. Methylprednisolone is the most common IV form. So here's our injectable glucocorticoid. It's intermediate acting, um, but also available in long acting. So again, anti-inflammation and anti-immune response is what you need to know for methylprednisone. And that long acting drug, also called depot, think waiting for a train at the train depot might take a long time. So you've got two choices here. You've got intermediate or long. And you don't want to give your methylprednisolone to babies who are less than 28 days old. They don't like needles. They don't. They don't want this stuff anyway. So uh, don't inject the baby with the methylprednisolone. And our third is our specific mineral corticoid. It's our only mineral or corticoid, fludrocortisone. Now, this is all about that sodium and blood pressure retention um, to control those levels, and it is for Addison's disease, where the problem is uh, some lower sodium levels. So adverse effects, water retention, which is what it's supposed to do, but you know, it can do it too well. So not recommended exactly for heart failure, can cause hypertension and some elevated intracerebral pressure. So if somebody's got a hemorrhage in their head, yeah, keep that in mind. Adverse effects also include peptic ulcers, and skin rash, increased blood glucose, dropped potassium, muscle pain, weakness, and compression, bone fractures, ouch, we don't like broken bones, that just hurts, um, yeah. All right, let's uh, talk about some things nurses need to know. We've got our nursing indications, do, 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 do your physical assessment, get that weight, get that height, and that I and O status is something you need to track. Get those vital signs, especially blood pressure, and we're going to monitor hydration levels, nutrition, get them to eat their broccoli, and immunity, white blood cell count. We want those labs. We want to know what's going on with their bodies and immunity. Other labs, we want that potassium and the glucose level and our electrolytes to keep track of. And watch out for edema, watch out for skin conditions, watch out for those peptic ulcers because ouchy stomach never feels good. And always look out for drug interactions. Always, we're great nurses. We know to do that and monitor for adverse effects. Some other important things that you'll want to know about these cortical steroids um, is to avoid sick people, report fever or sore throat or weakness or lethargy because, you know, immune system is down. Take them at the same time every day, and the best time to take them is in the morning with food, less GI uptake. Don't mix these with alcohol, aspirin, or NSAIDs, and don't stop taking it abruptly. No, no, don't stop. Adrenal crisis could be the result of that. So there's 13 different hormones. That's a whole lot. Just know these three. They're uh, pregnancy category C, so lactating mamas can transfer this to their babies, so that's a heads up. And again, don't stop taking these abruptly. If you're on them for like a week or more, it can cause endogenous adrenal suppression. That's where your adrenal glands just essentially uh, give up, so that's what we're avoiding. So thank you very much, and um, good luck on this test. You got this, and uh, have a great day.